What's up, ham fam? Welcome to Hard as a Mother, and it's the first episode of 2021. Where, where, where? I, of course, am your hostess with the most is Jizzy, and as usual with me every week is my lovely co-host, Harleen. Hi, everybody. I feel like I'm a little calm for the new year. Yeah. Yeah, that's my mantra. For anyone who said that I wasn't, oh, I proved you guys all wrong. Just kidding. No, I'm not. You know, it's just the start of the new year, so anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. 365 days. So to and, go. Yeah, exactly. So anyways, we are super excited. Um, today's episode is going to be a good, a good one. Yeah. So actually, um, I always tell her that uh, looking at our, all our stats, the most listened to episode of our podcast is Meet the Mamas, which is episode zero. Um, so I kind of just wanted to start the new year off fresh and do a Meet the Mamas part two, because as maybe most of you know, or some of you know, um, I had a different podcast partner back then, but I wanted to really highlight um, who we are and what we do. So if you're new or just tuning in, uh, we are Har and Jizzy, and we are on a mission to create a safe space for moms and dads or anyone really to just talk about the parenting or the struggles of parenting and the realness that comes with it and also be able to laugh at yourself. Yeah. And also I know that a lot of people were under restriction still. I do believe it's January 11th. So you guys don't forget to click subscribe. Uh, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have our YouTube channel, binge on it for the next week. Um, I promise you, uh, it's all a good one, but today's episode, um, You know, we always talk about authenticity and also everything here is unfiltered, uncensored. So tonight's or today's episode, you are truly, truly going to get to know Jizzy and myself. Um, You're going to be able to see what our life is like and what we think about uh, before, uh, basically all day, what we think about uh, a little bit of a glimpse of what our lives are are like yeah and um I know a lot of people ask like how did you guys get the podcast started so I kind of just want to share with you guys how it started so um last year in May ish uh I was talking to Maria who was my first podcast partner shout out Maria and um I was just telling her, uh, we were talking about parenting and the things we were shamed for. And like, we, we noticed that the recurring theme of our conversations were stuff about parenting. And I'm like, you know what, I wish I could just start a podcast so I can, you know, share this stuff with other people and, and know that other women out there are not alone. And she's like, well, why don't you do it? And I was like, well, first of all, I don't like the sound of my own voice. Second, I don't know shit about podcasts. <laughs> um, and she's like, well, now you're just making excuses. And at the time, it was when, like, lockdown kind of sort of started. And I was like, you're right. Like, I am just making an excuse. And and if there's any time to do it, it would be now. So fast forward, um, unfortunately, Maria couldn't continue on with us, but we all wished her all the best. And I think Har jumped on in September, yeah, I think it was, yeah, uh, yeah, September. Yeah, so prior to that, we I was recording at home in my closet, as some of you know, um, mostly because of the acoustics in there, but also because my toddler follows me everywhere like a shadow. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then now we have this beautiful space. We have the best team in the world, and we're always surrounded by such great people every week. So um, yeah, come a long way. Yeah, definitely. Um, I know that sometimes... <laughs> Our production, I have to just say our production team is the best. Like, I mean, I'm sitting here and they're prepping us and I'm like, oh, I need my phone. And someone's topping off the glass of wine. Like they don't need to do that, but that's how amazing they have been. And um, we're so excited that they're coming on this journey with us um, and they could see the evolution of how Giselle and I have been evolving, um, you know, over the last year. Actually, it's been over six months now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know exciting stuff I love coming here every week and, and because too. it's work um it's not work well, it's no, so it's much fun. work <laughs> so we can come here every week and and still do our thing which I've been so grateful for um yeah grateful for our team shout out team shout out shout out anyways <laughs> so the reason why we're here and um without further ado let's just deep dive so tonight uh, Giselle and I both decided that we were going to ask each other questions. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea. Well, <laughs> you know, first of all, she sends me a picture and she's just like, look at all these things. And it was a long one. And I started laughing. And a I picture was, of questions? A picture of questions because it was a lot. And she starts chuckling and I'm chuckling in my own head. And I was like, I'm the wrong person to challenge because one, I'm super competitive. Two, I think without thinking or I speak without thinking so sometimes it can come across as rude <laughs> it's never my intention but um that's why sometimes I need to be filtered but no because you know what when people are thinking it they don't want to say it but I'm that person who's gonna who's say gonna it. say it for everybody and that's what for I love everyone. about you and sometimes it can get me into trouble so um <laughs> I would say more than sometimes. <laughs> okay, all the time. But it's okay because you back it up with, I'm sorry, was that rude? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I've gotten us into situa- out of situations. That's true. With like, you know, just my antics. And I've gotten us some free shit uh, over the course of years. Yes, I love you for that. Well, I love you too. All right. Well, oh, well, before we do that, thank you so much for trusting me to be your co-host. And uh, I can't wait to see what 2021 is going to bring for us. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't have pe- picked a better person. Like, Pecked? <laughs> what are you going to fucking peck from me? <laughs> That's like a th- theme right now is peck peck. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, okay. <laughs> like I was saying, um, yeah, I couldn't have picked a better person if there was... I mean, I already had told her that I was doing a podcast. She's like, yeah, whatever you need, let me know, let me know. Uh, I'll help you out in any way I can. And she was just always just down since the very, very beginning. And then when I told her that I needed um, a new host, a new co-host, she was like on board. And the minute her jumped on board, everything just went from zero to 100 real quick. Well, you know, I, I, I feel like I might have ADD. You already know that. So everything's always zero to a fucking million. So anyways, this is what everybody's dying to know about Giselle and maybe me. No, you too. Don't okay, worry. Fine, I fine, got fine, 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 I got fine, fine. Okay, so <laughs> I, okay, my strategy tonight is I uh, have um, topics or I have like, sub, what, what do you call it? Subtitles or this whatever. This girl fucking uh, categorize all oh, her yeah, questions. Oh, yeah, that's right. Categorize. Into like Jeopardy subjects. Okay, well, you and know she what? she read them to me and I was just like, um, I'll take motherhood for 500 okay here we go we're gonna go right i'm gonna go first first? yeah all right um hold on before we start i have a surprise what is the surprise if you don't want to answer any question you have to take a shot bitch that's what i said that you were going to and trust me everything that you don't want to know i'm going to spill my beans well out. this I'm- is a special bottle oh of my hendrix God, i love hendrix, hendrix. Is Har's favorite but this is special it's it's flavored <sighs> okay well i don't want to f- answer maybe, anything maybe we'll be sponsored by <laughs> hendrix one day so hendrix we're coming for you <laughs> So anyways, um, that's the rules now. And yeah, you know, if I'm going to do that to you, of course, absolutely. I will do the same thing. You're a jackass, but (laughs) I'm all for it. I always, I'm a winner. So anyways, here is the first category, childhood. So I'm going to go first. All right. Okay. Who is your favorite sibling and why? Oh my God. Um... One's going to hate you now, so it's No, because, okay... I say my sister, but only because we're so close. Like, I 100% am closer to my sister than my brother, and he knows that, so he's not going to be offended. Um, But yeah, ever since, you know, for four years, it was just me and my brother when we were little, and we were best friends. And then my sister came along, and I was like, yes, a girl. (laughs) And then we kind of just always ganged up on my brother, but poor him. But anyways, um, yeah, okay. So if uh, you had Jordan and or uh, Chelsea on one... I guess you're going to let the, Jordan's hand go if you guys were over the cliff because you're going to save Chelsea first. Or you're going to save Chelsea and Jordan's just going to Well, if you're going to make me pick that, then I save nobody. I save myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Good God. answer. Good answer. <laughs> God, God. All right. All right. Okay. So I have um, a serious question. Here we go. Um, what is one thing you regret from your past? Holy fuck, you're going to start off that deep right now? Okay, um, so the one thing, and again, I, I, I talk bits and pieces about certain things of my life. I think the one thing that I truly regret and I'm still working on is um, making my son feel like I chose someone else besides him. Mm-hmm. 
and it's one I'm still trying to learn to forgive myself. Uh, it's slowly but surely, but I still have guilt over it, one thousand percent. Okay, follow up question. Oh my god, how do you like your coffee? Black? Is there any other way? <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah, I love my coffee black. No, I'm your coffee. <laughs> Someone help her. So I don't understand what what are you my coffee your guys. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> shit. I like them creamers. Fuck. That's why when you're like, oh. I like it black, I was like, okay, well, really? no. Because you're always telling me if it ain't white, it ain't right. Like, <laughs> That's true. Guys, I'm sorry. It's just my thing. It's like, I've Don't been be sorry. That's your preference. Everyone has a preference. Kay, like, okay, like, I, I feel like my preference has evolved. And right now, the flavor is vanilla. I like, <laughs> I like the Moy guys. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I'm not sorry. I like the Moy guys. That's it. Okay, For well, any that's... white guys watching out there, you're single, hot dad, whatever. Hit me up. Slide on my DMs. But do not send her unsolicited yes. dick pics. By, please, by because the, you know who ends up seeing them? That's <laughs> right, me. So okay. please keep it in your pants. So last night, somebody actually... Oh, that's um, disgusting. Somebody actually uh, texted me, a guy that I went on a date with, asked me if I would give him a hand job or a blow job. First of all, motherfucker, I didn't give you a blow job or a hand job the first date. What makes you think I'm going to give you a second one? Um, second one, motherfucker. How can I give you one with my mask on? Because it's <laughs> locked down. Well, the thing is, every time I get a like a... <laughs> dick video, dick pic. Actually, I, I forwarded it to Giselle and I was like, hey, I gotta show you something. Oh so she opened it and she was so fucking mad at me. Anyways. I was like sitting there and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> okay. <sighs> uh, let me do a two-part question for you. Okay. okay. One, who is your favorite cousin and why? <coughs> Just one? Just one. Uh, this better be a fucking good one. Okay. Well, obviously it's you. <laughs> What am I going to say, sit here and be like, uh, no, I like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Why? tell me which one you don't well, like. No, well, I'm just kidding. Obviously, because of this. Um, but, like, for context's sake, um, you guys probably saw that episode of what our, the one with the dope dad with RJ. He's also our cousin. And, like, our, my bubble is very small of the people that I, like, share everything with. And when it comes to family, it's always been, like, our RJ uh, we have other cousins, too, that are... But I'm her favorite, with. so let that be known. Get the fuck out of here. I'm her favorite. Okay. Is that your two-parter? Or is there no, no, one? there's okay. another one. Okay, okay. What's the one lie you told as a child and got away with? One? <laughs> well, I know you have a lot. But tell me, you didn't get away with all your lies. What one lie did you get away with, and what was it? You can even say adulthood, too, because that's part of my other question in your category of adulthood. I don't know. Um, what did I lie about recently? <laughs> oh, this was a pretty crazy one. Um, so I was dating this guy, and we went to L.A., and he's, he's very simple. And if, if he – you remember how much we used to spend on shoes? Yeah, like, a lot. Like, not – any shoes like Christian Louboutins and Jimmy Choo's and all that stuff. So I really wanted to go to LA to get a pair of Christian Louboutins from the flagship store. And um, if I knew that, if I told him, he wouldn't have taken me there. He'd been like, you're a fucking idiot. You're not spending that much on shoes. I was like, okay, that's fine. So uh, he at the time was looking for a place to live because he's moving down there. And he's like, I'm going to go check out this apartment. And I was like, can you drop me off at the mall? Cause I just want to get, pick up some souvenirs. And um, he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. So as soon as he dropped me off, I took a cab to the <laughs> Christian Louboutin store. <laughs> and I bought shoes. And then I cabbed back to the mall. And I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> wow. But and being him, he didn't know any better. So I took them home. And I was like, yeah, new shoes. So you got away with it. I did. They were like 900 USD, which I would never Damn, spend. Damn, girl, you I would, No, I would never spend that. Now, this is, that was back when That's I was living true. at home and didn't we have were a doing that. Like, if I did that now, oh, my God. Cannot. Anyways. You'll be on the couch, sleeping on the couch, because Mark would kick you out of bed. Probably. Yeah. Just yeah. kidding. He wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, he would. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> he would really question my decisions and be like, I mean, not that he doesn't already, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to rebuttal with that, but you already did. Yeah, yeah. So it's fine, fine, <laughs> fine. Whew. Anyways. All right. So it's my turn. Um, what is the lamest pickup line that's ever been used on you? 
Oh, fuck, really? Um, no, I don't, I have no idea. Fuck, what's the Is it just the dick pics then? Well, you had a pretty bad one last night. Yeah, that was super <laughs> bad. Uh, lamest pickup line. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Like, I don't, guys, I'm going to be honest. Guys, just, they're stupid, and all I get is <laughs> sexy legs. You're so beautiful. Why? Like, tell me fucking something oh. that isn't that. That's white noise. Thank you, Matthew Hussey. I've been watching you, um, taking some advice from him. So, anyways, I have no idea what pickup line um, anybody has used. Okay. I don't know. I, I think, no, I have no idea. It'll probably come to me, and if it does, I'll tell you. Okay. You'll tell us. Oh, you'll tell us. Yes. Basically the world. God, you guys, I'm going to watch this and I'm going to be like, fuck, my mom's going to watch this. That? But she's going to know everything that I've been lying and like my outs- my extracurricular activities. Okay, I have another question. We'll go two and two. Okay. Um, what is your favorite memory we have together? That's one of my questions. Okay, I'm going to ask well, you that too. Okay. okay. I'll answer right after then. <laughs> okay, actually, <laughs> my favorite memory <laughs> is when we went to Vegas. <laughs> it's kind of mean, but it's not mean. So we went on a girl's trip. I think it was... It was my 21st birthday. Your 21st birthday. I think it was like the first time you went to Vegas. And we had somebody, um, you know, like we're really easy to travel with. I think somebody was there who was just really, really questioning our friendship with them because I was like, oh, how the fuck do you act this way? You're a grown ass woman. So anyways, um, Giselle was sitting shotgun in the car with me. And um, I uh, was like, it was hot. And I was driving literally with my leg up like this. Oh, she was driving like this. I was using the air conditioner to air my cooch. It was so fucking hot. hot. It was so fucking hot. (laughs) Anyways, so she was saying something to me and somebody didn't hop in the car. Actually, I think it was Jackie. I'm so sorry, Jackie. Like I was, uh, anyway, she was hopping in the car and I was getting irritated or whatever and I was about to go. And um, she goes, at this. So I turned around and I was like, what the fuck do you want? And she goes, uh, Jackie's not in the car. And I was like half driving and she's like half of her body's in and out. And Jackie's is like the same height as you. Yeah, so I felt super bad. And like the other part that happened on the same time, and we are so sorry, Jackie, is uh, <laughs> she wasn't paying attention. And she was like opening all, we were getting all our shopping bags. So she's like, uh, let's just hurry up. And she's about to close the trunk. And she fucking nailed Jackie right in the head. And everybody who was valeting outside was like, <gasps> And I was just like trying not to laugh. It wasn't, it was funny, but it wasn't funny. It wasn't on purpose. So we felt super bad. We bought our neck pillow. And I think like the Vegas trip was super memorable. It was just totally, we were just young and dumb and doing young and dumb. Like you're going to bring your bone into the club. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Um, So that's one of my favorite memories of us together. But um, another one is. I don't know. I guess it's when I used to spend so much time at your house as kids. Like every summer, we used to pretty much live there. Yeah. And you would always take us to um, to the store, and then we would like take an orange with us, and then you would like peel the orange. But as you're peeling it, you would drop it while we walk, and you're like, "This is so we can find our way back." <laughs> and I was like, "This is like a neighborhood. This isn't like." fucking the forest we lived in marlboro remember i know know, but how are you gonna not know how to get back (laughs) home you're gonna follow your orange peels so i i was really young at the time and i was like oh okay yeah that makes sense (laughs) but then later i'm just like this girl fucking just littered like blatantly (laughs) i don't litter anymore (laughs) (laughs) all right next question okay so um, we talk about childhood trauma a lot. Mm-hmm. What is the biggest trauma that you had and face as an adult? Like the trauma that you had as a child that you're still currently facing today? I guess um, it's just not being able to voice my feelings. Um, I don't, I guess it might be the same for other, in other cultures, but in the Filipino culture, a lot of the time, it's like it's, you're shunned for f- saying how you feel, and be, I think it's because like 
you always have to put on a happy face and you know your parents always just want you to be happy and that's fine but then it's like you're taught to like suppress the negative emotions and you know it's like why are you crying you're being so ma arte why why do you feel this way or whatever like it everything that's that you felt that was negative had to be pushed down and yeah. so that fucked me up like I grew up and I didn't know how to handle my feelings like every time I felt something negative I was like okay I can't feel this right now and and it would come out in other ways like I would drink or I would get high or throw I a would, Starbucks drink across the room <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> or I would shop like I had a pretty bad shopping problem um People always say I get it from my mom, but I honestly think it was because of that. Because I'd be like, oh, I need some retail therapy after a day like today. Because there's literally nothing else I could do. Like, I couldn't talk to anybody about it. I couldn't, um, you know, I could cry about it, but then I, that is frowned upon as well. So, yeah, that um, I think that was the biggest trauma for me. But at the same time, I can't blame my parents for that. Like, I don't blame my parents for that yeah. anymore. Because they came here with not knowing what to do like uh, parenting is fucking hard like absolutely right now we have all the resources and I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing so um much less for them they came here and they're they're immigrants and you know they just wanted to ha give us a good life and my dad gave us a very good life but um all he knew was how to provide and, yeah. and it was never uh, you know um a case of like okay we need to talk about this talk about your feelings talk yeah. about um, how you're going to deal with the feelings. I was never taught that. So I learned that much later on. Before you ask me a question, <clears throat> so given that there's the trauma that you've had, look right into the cameras and tell them who you are today. Based on the trauma. Based on your trauma. Well, um, I can tell you right now I'm here because I recognize that trauma. And it took me a fucking long time. And um, I think I get along the most with people who are so self-aware that, like, it's easy for me to empathize with how they are. And um, and the people who aren't self-aware, I'm just like, you know what? Maybe you'll get there, but I'm not on that vibe right now. <laughs> so um, I've really come a long way. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just happy I can share this platform with everybody and, and share that because I think it's really important. Um, and again, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not blaming my childhood. I'm not blaming my parents. I had a very happy childhood. My parents are very loving. Um, but again, it, it's just what they knew how to do. And so we got to, say, having said that, we got to really cut ourselves some slack as parents. Like, nobody really knows what the fuck they're doing. And if you come across someone who does know what the fuck they're doing, they're You lying. lie. They're you lying fucking, fucking lie. Face, okay? It's not easy. It's not perfect. Like, uh, uh, yeah, that's. I think you guys know that already, but yeah, just got to em emphasize that. All right. Um, actually, I want to ask you the same question because that's very interesting. And actually, I think that might have been one of my questions, but anyways. Um, about my... Uh, yeah, like what is it about your ch childhood, like a, a traumatic experience or a series of events that kind of just makes you who you are today? Okay. Um, <laughs> fuck. Okay, so as much as I put up this strong front because I, you know, people are like, you're such a tyrant, you're this, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, um, I really do feel like, I really do feel like um, I look for validation. I look for validation of my career, the success, me being a good mom, um, everything that I have. It's not necessarily materialistic, um, which was in the past was, how I perceive my own success by showing my family that I did all of this by having a nice car, having this house and going on extravagant vacations. Um, I still sometimes feel like I'm seeking validation and I second guess myself, which is stemming from my dad. Again, a lot of the validation had to come from my dad, which is, you know what? I have to be honest if I'm looking at myself in the mirror that, um, that's probably why I haven't been super successful in my dating life because I don't allow boundaries with men that um, that are pushing my boundaries. It's like, it's okay, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, he fucked up once, twice, three times, it's fine, he's gonna do it, but it's repetitive. And I feel like um, 
it's not just that dating life too, but it's everything else in my life. So I seek for validation saying, you're doing a good job, Harleen. Um, And you know what? At the end of the day, I really shouldn't give a fuck because I should feel good when I lay down to go to bed and lay down. And and you do now, right? Yeah. And and I'm not going to lie. I struggle with some validation. And when I struggle through with it, I talk to my most trusted people and I talk my feelings out with them. I think that's the only way for me to get past through whatever it is I'm going through at that moment Absolutely. is by talking it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a good answer. Well, so. Um, so my next question. Oh, another question. <laughs> God damn. Um, so how many unsolicited dick pics are stored in your phone right now? Is that why you needed your phone? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not going to lie. I have. Don't lie. I want to know. Okay. Okay. I'm not a disgusting pig. No, it's but the, the disgusting pigs are the ones who are sending you this. I know, <laughs> but I mean. okay, but I'm going to share something. But it's not because I do it. Uh, okay, I just, I have a lot. I have a lot of <laughs> videos. I have a lot of pictures. I have a lot. I actually have a folder of like videos and dick pics. And the reason is because when I... <laughs> The reason is when I have girls night out, I fucking show all my girlfriends who are married or my cousins who are married that they're all tied down. I think there's only myself and another two girlfriends or that aren't married out of my family. I'm the only single person. Well, that's nothing to be ashamed of. But also, no, but I get to do a lot of shit by right. myself. And no, exactly. I'm not accountable to anyone. You don't got to answer to anyone. Exactly. So... I share the pictures because I laugh and I, sh- I screenshot things because I'm like, look at the, what this idiot did. Mm-hmm. It, it's just more for like fun. Yeah, and it's fun and games. It's not like you look through it like, oh I'm just like, god. oh my God, I'm going to masturbate to this <laughs> one. <laughs> this is part of my, this is going in my spank bank. No, and uh, most of the time they get deleted after I've already right. shown my girlfriends. But when I get new ones, like I said, I'll forward them to whomever because for Anyone who sends me dick pictures, hey, that's my shit now, so I'm just going to share it. It's right. Hey, hear that, guys? Like, if you don't, don't want send me shit. everyone seeing your junk, don't send it. Like, it's... Uh, go back to my post on IG on why nudes are played out. <laughs> Tell me you can read. And maybe you can get me in the sack. No, I'm just kidding. That's yeah. not true. Um, anyways... <laughs> Category change. Okay. Here we We're go. going into adulthood. <laughs> okay, okay. Hit me. I got two questions for you. All right. So, I always feel like we're talking about my dating life. <laughs> mm-hmm. We want to, I, I want the lowdown dish about your dating history. And I'm so sorry, Mark. Um, eh, whatevs. <laughs> Anyways, one, who was your first kiss? And how old were you? My first kiss was <laughs> this white boy named Travis. Oh, shout out, <laughs> Travis. Are you single no. now? <laughs> Just kidding. He's too much. Um, and I was, how old are you in sixth grade? No, yeah, sixth grade. I want to say 12. Yeah, around that. Um, yeah, that was my first kiss. It didn't really count. We were, like, dating, but, you know, dating back then is just, like, oh, I like that guy, but you never talk, ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, that was it. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Who did you give your babinka away? How old were you? And what was the experience like for the first time? For the audience, if you want to know what babinka is, it means your vagina. Because my grandma used to always tell us, don't give your babinka away. So that's what I asked her. I don't want to drink. So <laughs> <laughs> it was Mark. Okay. It was Mark. Oh, okay. Um, so for those of you guys who don't know, Mark is uh, my spouse, my baby daddy. Um, we were dating way back in the day. We started dating, I think, in sixth or seventh grade. And... We were on and off, but we, I think we dated up until high school and then we took like a six or seven year break because we both really needed to grow up. We would not be together right now if we had stayed together. So yeah, we we were high school sweethearts, but we also just took a break. We dated other people. 
um, didn't even talk for like three years. I think I hated him actually for three years, but he knows that. Um, you told me I wasn't allowed to talk to him at one point in time. I know. Yeah. I was like, why are you saying hi to Mark? I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually a true story, but yeah, I was yeah. like, fuck I you. It. I did. Well, I, I told, it. I told you, I was like, I'm not going to not say hi to him. I know. I know that you, there's a lot of reasons why you guys loved Mark and why you took him into the family. Cause there was... You know, you've you had a lot of boyfriends come in and uh, in and out, but Mark always knew he Mark was my was favorite. Mark was always um, he's my favorite. You're still die. my you, Bona. You my favorite <laughs> forever and ever. But, but also, like even when we were with other people, we kind of just stayed. Minus the time that I hated him, we kind of just stayed best friends. Like if um, we whenever we would talk or, need, or he needed me or I needed him. Like when he w ended up in the hospital one time, I, I knew about it. And when I ended up in the hospital, he came and you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it I always had a spot for him in my heart. So, um, after one trip to Bali and Australia, it was we, over, we got back together and, um, yeah, uh, that wasn't your question though. It was, <laughs> it was when I lost my babinka. Uh, so you lost your babinka, her Mark. virginity to Mark. How old no, were you? No, it's sexual debut now. Oh, sorry, sexual debut. <laughs> How old were you? I was 16. Oh, your mom's going to spank you. I should probably Okay, know. okay. Was the experience good? How would I know? I, don't I was fucking just like, know. Cool. This is... Well, he is he better now? Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Like... <laughs> I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, he was such a pro. That means he had practice, which is gross. Good job, Mark. Good job. Um, but, yeah... I want to ask you the same thing. What? How old were you and who was it that you lost your babinka to? Okay. <laughs> I was 17. Okay. I lost my virginity. My sec I you had, had your sexual, sexual debut, debut with my baby daddy, with BJ. He was the first guy that I had a sexual debut with. Oh, hey, yeah. BJ. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so now his parents are going to see that too. Well, they're not going to watch Probably this. Not. Whatever. Um, okay. My question for you. Have you ever made a sex tape? I'm going to take a shot. I can't. I, I think we already know what fucking, the answer is. I just, okay. But, um, I just incriminated myself. Okay, first of all. Do you still want a shot, though? Yeah, I do. Okay, I love me some Hendrix. Can you get the glasses over there? It's on the, the side. Yeah, I put a little surprise there. Hard doesn't know that I planted God these drinks. God damn. Okay. <laughs> so shot glasses. it's not like I intentionally tried to make a sex tape. Uh, Wait, so you didn't know you were being filmed? I actually saying? didn't know That's that I was. Disgusting. It was disgusting. I didn't know until th he showed it to me and I what? was mad. And then and then I was like, okay, okay. And I was like, okay, we'll watch it. And now it's time to delete it. Oh my God, my son's going to fucking watch this. Is he though? He, he does. He watches <laughs> it with the boys. I can't itch. Okay. Is that, is that it? Yep. Is that your question? Is yep. it my turn now? Yep. Okay. Boner, I'm so sorry. I'm going to ask this question. But you know I have a lot of love for you. Um, they don't know who you're talking about. Mark, Mark, Mark. I know, Mark but they don't Bona. know why you call him Boner. And oh, his last name is Bona. That's why I call him Boner. <gasps> okay. So, who is your favorite ex-boyfriend and why? I know they're your ex, so they can't be your favorite, but who is your favorite ex-boyfriend and why? Well... I don't think I like any of my ex-boyfriends. Damn, this is good. Is it? So good. Oh, I think I'm going to have a shot then too. Can you pass me a glass? Um, if we're talking about people we've previously dated, I, well, I can't say Mark, right? Or no, because he's okay, not okay, your sorry. ex. Well, technically, um, it would have to be, uh, I'm just going to take this. <laughs> fucking bullshit. You no, know, I was gonna, I was gonna say it, but then I might regret it. And I mean, I'm not hiding anything from Mark. Obviously, it's just. Uh, well, you're just hiding it to the whole world. Anyways, since you passed that question, I get to ask another one. Fine. What's the most embarrassing thing you did? What was it? And would you change it? Just one. I'm really clumsy. I've done many embarrassing things. Just shit yourself. Just pee yourself. No. Um. 
Oh. Well, when that, you know when something happens and you just can't stop thinking about it because you're like, fuck, I'm such a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so this one time, um, I went to spin class and um, I was, I hadn't gone to this one studio yet. It's, it was new. And I was there and the instructor was a male and he came over. He's like, do you want me to help you on your bike? And it, w- it was someone I knew. Yeah. And um, I haven't seen him in a long time. Um, and so I got on the bike. He's like, yeah, let me set you up. And then he looks at me up and down. He's like, you look good. And I was like, oh, thanks. And he's like, no, I meant your bike. You're ready to go. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. And the whole time I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> I'm going to uh, pee myself. I was like, oh, thanks. You think I look good? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh I have my to take god the shot for the one question i didn't answer yes take your bubble it's good right Ooh. hendrix you never disappoint hendrix you should sponsor us yeah i promise i'll have bottles and bottles everywhere i'll just <clears throat> i'm an alcoholic thank you after. <clears throat> thank you for that question um oh god okay do you watch porn and what do you search for in the search bar when you do watch porn? <laughs> You're an asshole. Am Holy I? shit. That's so rude. Okay. <laughs> I don't watch porn, guys. You don't watch porn? No, I watch. Yes, I do watch porn. Okay. One. Okay, I like foreplay porn. That's what gets me off. Like role playing foreplay or. No, not role playing. Just or just a lot of just foreplay. A lot of foreplay. I feel like that's how you're. You're the just build get, up. Yeah, you're just gonna get me wet with foreplay. Like I hear that. So if there's any guys that if future guys that Har's gonna hook up with, just you know, slow it down. Slow it down. Give me a little foreplay. Yeah, foreplay. Um, foreplay. So yeah, I search foreplay. Cool porn. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do you? Search? What do you search on porn? Like, on, for porn? Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking <laughs> bullshit! <laughs> okay, 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 I, okay, no, I can't, I can't. Like anal? No, no, <laughs> no, I do not like anal. Like micro dick? I just learned what micro dick was. Oh, cause yeah, I asked her, I was like, one question I asked her was, have you ever dated a guy with a micro penis? And I'm like, and she said, no. And I said, well, what if you met the love of your life and you fell in love with him and he was a perfect guy for you and he's everything you wanted in a man, but he had a micro penis. And she's like, well, how small is a micro penis? So I sent it to her. Yeah, no, he'll never be. I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me? Oh, first of all. Before he could be the love of my life, I probably would have tapped that by then. Okay, so I would have known. Theoretically. No, it wouldn't last. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good to know, good to know. <laughs> Wait, is it my turn? Yes. Next okay. question, please. Okay, so I want to congratulate you on your big move away from oil and gas. Woohoo! Woo! Fuck you, oil and gas. Yeah, so we talk about this all the time that yeah. you hate your oil and gas job. So yeah. tell me one why you hated it and why did you stay in that field for so long? Because <sighs> it was a family thing, right? Like if you guys know me, my entire family is in oil and gas. And it was true. I think it just all started with my grandpa because he was he owned his own um, engineering firm, I believe like a really small one. And I actually wanted to be a dental hygienist. And then he talked me out of it. He was like, why do you want to be that? He's like, if you go to school for uh, piping, I will pay for it. You can start now and you can start getting paid. So at the time I was like 19 and he's like, yeah, I'll pay for you to go to school your first year. So I went and he had hired me at his company and he was paying me really good money. So I was like, oh shit. Like, yeah, I'll stay in oil and gas. And I've experienced the good and I've experienced the bad. Like the good obviously being it was booming. Yeah. Um, you know that I was reckless with my money. I shopped at Holt. I drove a Benz. All this shit. Uh, we went to Vegas. Like I did everything I wanted. Yeah. Was I happy? No. I fucking hated my job. Like I would come to work and want. I would want to set my computer on fire. I'm like this is bullshit. And honestly it's not. 
it's not for everybody. I still have cousins and friends who love their jobs and they're really good at it. And Mark, Mark's really good at his job. Yeah. And he's really, he, he likes it. it was, um, it's just not, not for everybody. It wasn't for me. There were days where I would like, I could go eight hours without talking to anybody. And I was like, I'm going fucking insane. So, um, but like I said, when it was good, it was great. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of office ego and politics. I worked with a lot of men and they were all just pigs. Um, not all, sorry, not all. A lot of the engineers that I worked with, they were just assholes i'm just like so you think just because you get paid more than me and you have that stupid fucking ring on your pinky that, <laughs> yeah that that you can treat me like this like it was a nightmare try uh, being a woman in that industry like some of the companies i worked for i was just like oh i was it was gross it was gross i was really only in it for the money yeah only. i could see that i mean we were young and reckless in right. our 20s for right. sure we yeah. just spent a lot of fucking money on stupid shit. Right. Um, that's a good question. Mm. Thank you for that. You're so welcome. I'll try to find one that's um, <laughs> serious. <laughs> Great. She's going to try to make me cry or something today. Okay, but here's one. You've dealt with many deaths in the past few years. And I know that it's at some, on some parts, it's hard to keep a brave face for both you and your child. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some ways that you have coped with that in the past? Like when you feel like it's all rushing back to you, like how, how do you put on a brave face for you and, and Jaden? Um, generally when I put a brave face on, um, before I do that, I actually let to cry out alone. And then I, allow myself to feel sorry for myself for just that split second. Because mm -hmm. in the past, I used to just allow myself to wallow forever and ever and ever. And poor me, I made excuses for me. I understand that I have gone through a s certain situation, but I prolonged it, making it an excuse for certain behaviors that I was doing. And it wasn't justifiable. Mm -hmm. So any time that I have to deal with a death or I have to deal with something that's coming back to me. I, I take a moment for myself. I cry it out. And I say to myself, you're here right now. Be in the present. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason why you are still standing. Mm -hmm. So find a way to move forward. Um, and a lot of the times when I'm feeling a certain way, I always have trusted people that I can talk my feelings out with um, not to help me justify what I'm doing but to help me understand the process because sometimes my process is very all over the place so when I ask people I actually navigate my own process because I already know the answer mm -hmm. I just needed to talk it out you have to say it out loud sometimes was that rude <laughs> <laughs> <Just Sorry. kidding. laughs> um, yeah that's a good answer and that could help other moms out there who are dealing with death and don't necessarily know how to go about it with her kids so and and it's true you do have to let yourself feel those things I know I'm not a crier like I know that you guys have seen me on the episodes cry a couple of times but that's because it's been suppressed for so long mm -hmm. that I'm allowing myself to be vulnerable let me tell you that I have the last it's funny I, t I I actually called you or I texted you and I said when we recorded with Nicole um our uh past guests and I said shit you know what I just realized I told the world what did I tell the world or something that, that I you didn't like to give head oh yeah that <laughs> I didn't like to give head and I I lost sleep over that because I because you know what I'm very intimate vulnerable with the people that I love the mm -hmm. people that I trust but I have to sit here and talk about motherhood adulthood development everything else and I'm not being true and authentic mm -hmm. I want people to know that this is a real situation so right. if I'm not bringing that to the table then why the fuck are you why do you want to watch me right right, right? You, so. you make a really good point and because we're sharing all of this with the world um like thank you for letting us into your bubble yeah, I'm so sure everyone wants to know. Well, like people that. are going to come into our bubble more often. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just a progression for us because it's tough to be vulnerable. It's tough to share to the world what you're thinking, what you hate about yourself, what you love about yourself. And um, people critiquing 
you and your family and your decisions and your choices. Yeah. And we knew that was that was going to eventually happen as, you know, people are starting to watch us more and more. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it's just, and it's just something that we both decided that we were going to be okay with. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's another thing, too, is that um, you can't please everybody. Like, you're always going to say something that somebody doesn't like. And, and I knew that already. And, yeah. and um, you know... I'm okay with getting criticized, and if people don't like what we say, that's fine. You're not a jar of Nutella. You can't make everybody happy. Well, remember, we are, um, we're, we're, like you said, we're not for everyone, and we're an acquired taste. Right. Only for the finest people. Just uh, kidding. The, wow, the that finest, was so cheap. The finest in the hood. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, switching gears again. All right. Pregnancy. How did you find out you were pregnant? Oh, God. And what was your reaction and what was Mark's reaction? Okay. Um, I think I discussed this in an earlier episode, but I, obviously for our new viewers, I will share with you. So uh, June of 2016, I started keto. And, um, and I felt really, really sick and nauseous. And, I, and my brother, who was the one who got me into it, I, I messaged him and I was like, this keto is making me feel like shit. Like, I'm tired. I'm throwing up. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. And he's like, oh, no, that's called keto flu. Like, <laughs> it's, it's just because your body's not used to not eating carbs. You just got to push through it. And I was like, yeah, okay. So my birthday came. My birthday came in. My, my friends were like, hey, we know you're on keto, but we're going out for dinner, right? And I was like, no, man, I fucking, I feel like shit. I don't want to go anywhere. And they're like, you have to, like, you... Just even if it's just us girls, because back then I used to go for dinner with like all like 20 of my friends. And, but then, then the girls were like, just just us girls, let's just go. Yeah. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll go. So I went and um, everyone was like, so what's up with you? And I'm like, I don't know, man, this keto's really kicking my ass. And then Barbara, our previous guest uh, in episode, the episode called baby mama she was like are you sure that's the only uh symptom you're feeling maybe you're pregnant and I was like uh no bitch I'm not pregnant it's keto and she's like well what else have you been feeling and I was like well I I did miss my period and I did send Mark out for a watermelon last night at like 11 o'clock and she's like bitch you're pregnant and I was like no I'm not stop saying that right so um the waitress came and take, took a picture of us yeah. and she's like, say smile. And, or she's like, she's like, smile. And then Barbara said, no, say baby because Giselle's pregnant. And I was like, shut the fuck up, Barbara. Um, and then I was, she's like, if you're not pregnant, I want you to take a test right here, right now. I was like, yeah, really here in the restaurant. We were at notable. And, um, she's like, okay, I'll go get one. So she fucking got one. She got two. <laughs> um, and so she came and she's like, here, take it. And I was like, okay. So I took it in the bathroom. And it was fucking positive. The first one was Yikes. positive. And then I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is impossible. And so I took another one and it was positive. And I was like, fuck me. So I texted my sister who was there. And I was like, you need to come to the fucking bathroom right now. And she came. And as soon as she came in the door, I just bawled. And I was like, oh. I'm pregnant. And she's like, oh, my God. And I was like, no. And I cried. And... um God, if Barbara wasn't there pushing me to take the fucking test, I don't know what I would have done because I was still drinking. I went to the Beyonce concert like a week before that and I yeah. was drinking. Uh, i pretty sure I had smoked weed. I don't know, but I, I wasn't obviously thinking that I was pregnant. So I was doing whatever. And um, I, to- I went back to the table and I told the girls, I was like, I'm fucking pregnant. And at, nobody could believe it. Everybody's jaws dropped because they're like, this was just a joke. And then the waitress came back and I told her, I was like, I, I actually am pregnant. <laughs> and she's like, oh, uh, congratulations. Um, and then how Mark found out was um, I, had, I had discussed with the girls at dinner. I was like, how am I going to fucking tell Mark? And they're like, well, put the pregnancy test inside like a takeout box and then be like, surprise. surprise. So I did that. I put it in a, pre- in a takeout box. He opened it. He looked at it. And he's like, what? And I was like we're pregnant and then he like sat down and he was quiet for a bit and then he looked at me and he was like so you didn't bring me any food (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah no like for everybody like obviously it was the best thing that ever happened to us but at the time we just we like a bunch of my friends were like late bloomers like 
only some of them are starting to have kids now, but yeah. like back then I was like one of the first ones. I was the second one in our group and um, we just weren't ready. We had moved into a adult only complex. Yeah. <laughs> and we were just like, shit, because now we had to leave. So, yeah. So uh, I know I get to answer to ask two questions. Um, I'm going to jump a little bit because we might not get to everything we wanted to ask today. All right, jump. So Jeopardy time. Beep, 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 beep. Burning, burning, burning question. So today, Har reached out to Jizzy's friends. What? <laughs> what? Because there's some burning, burning, burning questions they wanted oh to ask. Oh, God. I hate you guys. And <laughs> some of her friends and families wants to know, would you do anal again? I think I know who asked you this. I hate you guys. Um... You know what? It's not my favorite. <laughs> so it's a yes or a no. Would you do it again? I would do it again, but like, it's not my favorite. That's, fuck it. I, it's not. It's not. Things shouldn't be going so in yes. the out hole. So yes. But I would do it again because okay. Mark likes it. I don't know. Fuck. Next question. I fucking hate it. <laughs> no, my turn. Okay. See, I thought I could get away with asking another question. <laughs> What's one of your bedroom fetishes that few people know about? <sighs> you unplugged it. No. Did I unplug it? There you go. Um, I'm going to take a shot because... <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm going to take a shot. Sure. I'm not sure if I... If this person that I'm talking to is going to watch this... I don't know if this is going to go anywhere, but just in case, that is not a shot. Yeah, what it is. the fuck is Have you been to the bar in the States? I'm sorry. They what is college. this? <laughs> next question. Okay, next question. Fuck. <laughs> okay, this one's going to be a good one. Um, what's the sweetest thing Jaden says to you that makes your day better no matter what kind of mood you're in? Um, Jaden just, Jaden always tells me he loves me every day. Doesn't matter. When he goes to school, he gets out of my car. He just tells me he loves me. And that just makes your day better. It just makes my day because the one thing that I tell Jaden is life is short and it's nothing for us to be scared of because life will, whatever happens to us, it's, it's what like like that's life. Mm -hmm. It's what was in dealt in our cards. Mm -hmm. So let's never regret before we leave. Before you always just tell someone how you feel. I tell Jaden when I walk out the door, or when he's getting out of the car, I love him, and he tells me he loves me. And there's never a day that he doesn't tell me he loves me. Every day, every day. So sweet, so so sweet. And also he looks at me and he says. Hi, mom. Like, literally <laughs> like that. With his face. Hi, mom. Aww. And I say, well, what do you want? So there's this thing. <laughs> and that means involving taking your credit card out. Oh, my God. So, See, we're sounding more and more like our parents. And then, like, he, and then he gives me this little, like, puppy dog eyes. I'm like, that's not going to work. <laughs> and then eventually it just does work. I love him a lot. I know he's my only child. I know I spoil him, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? He's overall, as much as he can be a little bit of a jackass, I love him so much. And overall, he's a great kid. Mm -hmm. So I know that. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. So is it my turn yet? Yes. Okay. Um, so we both had C-section, which is fucking painful as fuck as postpartum. So one, I'm just going to share with you a little bit of pros and cons of um, having a C-section. One, okay. that my vagina and my asshole is not stretched <laughs> during natural birth. This the JJ is still fucking intact. But, but they bounce back, I heard. Like it's Well, anyways, just, the, whatever. The vagina My vagina's very, still tight as fuck. The anyways. vagina's a very, a very magical thing, and it actually does bounce back. Okay, well, okay. Just, okay, they okay. bounce back. So I don't know. Okay, but anyways, I know my vagina's still nice and intact. It's, anyways. Nice um, and tight. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> um, so sometimes with the C-section, um, there's a lot of complications. I know for me, 
uh, the stomach part has never gotten back to the way that it used to be. And it's just a thing that um, I struggle with. What's the one thing that you struggle with because of a C-section? Oh, um, fuck, man. It was the, the dead muscle. So I'm going to share something with you guys that I actually shared <laughs> with one of my coworkers who was like this young guy. Because um, we were talking just just a bunch of our coworkers and, and we were talking about like our birth experiences and stuff. And um, when I had to have an emergency C-section, everything was going fine. And then I think Mark had said that um, the umbilical cord had wrapped around Ava's neck. So we had to get her out as soon as yeah. possible, right? So I'm in the operating room and Mark's trying to talk me through it. He's just telling me funny stories, trying to just keep my spirits up. And I made the fucking mistake of looking up. So... If you've had a C-section before, you've seen it in the movies. They put a screen. They put a screen there so that you can't see what's going on down there because it's fucking traumatizing, right? But I looked up. Don't look up because they have this um, light that shines on you. You can see it. And the light, it, it was like a mirror because it was like stainless steel or no steel or whatever. But it was like a mirror. So I saw them flip my stomach over. So I know what the inside of my stomach looks like. It was. It was fucked. But anyways, um, as when that happens, I guess, they, so with they stitched me back together, obviously, but, um, like, a lot of that muscle there is just dead. Like, I can't, I can't see it ever bouncing back to the way it was because it's just, it's just there now. You know when you scratch it, you can scratch it so hard it doesn't, like, for yeah, me, it doesn't like feel numb. anything. It's almost numb. Yeah, because it's like, I could the punch nerves you there are destroyed. And you wouldn't feel it. Right. I mean, I would feel it in my inside. <laughs> Girl, don't punch me there. You can, like, pinch it, and I can't feel it because, like, it, it's dead. Um, but I think that's the thing. It's like, I'll lose weight everywhere else. If, if I'm trying to lose weight, I'll lose weight everywhere else except there. Yeah. Because it's, like, just, like, a lot of dead muscle. And, yeah. So, Ava was obviously a preemie. When yes. Ava came out and you saw her, um, what were your initial thoughts? Like, did you ever think, like, because the umbilical cord was wrapped around her, did it scare you to the point that you were like, what if she doesn't make it? Oh, yeah, fuck, it scared me a lot. But I was in so much pain because, first of all, when I got the epidural, the doctor messed up three times. So I felt that fucking needle go inside three times. And it was the worst. Like, I can't get needling done because of it. I have PTSD. Yikes. But uh, Mark watched the whole thing, and I'm just like, what the fuck is this? So after that, I was just like, I just need the baby out. Like, I can't. Yeah. Everything's so painful. I just can't do it anymore. And when she first came out, um, I know that I'm going to answer this question for a lot of women because one of my friends asked me this. She was like, is there something wrong with me because I'm not excited to be a mom? And I'm like, absolutely fucking not. Yeah. Like, I was not connected to my baby. Um, it, maybe it had to do with the fact that it was a C-section. I couldn't hold her after. Yeah. Mark was the one holding her. And I think my mom held her, too, um, before I did. And because my milk supply was late, because she was early, I didn't breastfeed um, as adequate as I should have been. And yeah. so I felt very disconnected from her. Um, and I always tell um, my friends who are pregnant, who are expecting their first child, like, don't feel guilt for that. I yeah. didn't feel connected to my baby until maybe the year after. Um, I was going through a lot of postpartum. Like I said, I wasn't ready for a baby. Um, now, I am obsessed with my kid. Yeah. Everything revolves around my kid. She's, the, she's my best friend. Like, we just, we have so much fun mm. together. But in the beginning, yeah, it was... I, I don't think people should feel ashamed for not feeling a certain way when they um, give birth. Like, it's yeah. not all like, oh, my God, it's so hard. It's just, yeah. It's You're thing. like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like in the movies, right? No. Like, for many women, yes, of course. And there's many women, especially ones I know, who are out there and have been trying, have been trying so hard to have kids. Yeah. And, and even for a while, I felt kind of guilty because I was like, there's so many people trying, but it happened for me. Like, why yeah. me? But... Obviously, it happened for a reason. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just want to tell everybody out there, like who f who might feel that way. It's not. It's normal. It's a hundred percent normal. Yeah. I didn't feel, actually, like when Jaden came out, um, 
he, I had a really tough pregnancy, and when he came out, he actually ha- swallowed meconium, and he had respiratory issues. It was funny because he had a needle that was stuck right into his head, and he was in the ICU. From what? Uh, it's probably well. The doctor said it was from meconium. That's probably why he's having a he he swallowed his own shit. That's that's what it was, and then he just had a little bit of res or he had respiratory issues, and when he had the needle, the nurse wheeled me in because I had a C section as well, and they said do you want to hold your baby? I was like, no. Like I legit told the nurse, I don't want to hold my baby. Mm -hmm. One, I was afraid that I would take the needle out of his head and it just wasn't what I expected. And I was like, I was a fucking mess. Like I was in labor for almost 24 hours. Like he wasn't coming out. It was a a C-section right away. I was all drugged up. And I, again, like I wasn't ready to be a mom, but I mean, I love and adore him. Um, you know, after we went through all of the respiratory issues, Mm -hmm. like I just wasn't connected either. Um, it's just, I, I was just like, how is this, this is not the experience that I thought I'd have. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So after that, I was like, "Mm." right. Yeah. Also, did you say they wheeled you in like on a wheelchair? Yeah. Because at my hospital, they were like, you have to learn to walk. Like, it, you're going to heal faster if you just walk on your own. I was like, fuck Well, you, you know what? The nurse told me, one of the fucking nurses told me that I needed to walk. And I said, bitch, I can't walk. Yeah. I'm a fucking bleed it's everywhere. Hard. It's hard. But that's why when we had Jade, shout out Jade, when we had her on uh, the other episode, when she started talking about her home birth and how yeah. it was very focused on the mom yeah. and on the mom recovering and like getting through it is very mom focused yeah we're at the hospital it's like get in have your baby get out because they got to make room right yeah um and then when she told me that I was like fuck that sounds amazing it sounds like they really care yeah about no you. when the nurse told me I had to fucking get up I was like fine I'm gonna get up I was like I'm gonna bleed everywhere yeah. and listen Harleen fucking bled everywhere I let it was like Hensel and Gretel I left trails of blood everywhere I was like bitch I just fucking told you yeah. I know my own body don't yeah. make me walk I will do it she went from leaving trails of orange peels to leaving trails well it was funny because she was like I'm gonna take the catheter out and I was like don't take the catheter out because I I gotta pee so anyways it was so embarrassing because I was trying to get out of bed and BJ wasn't there at the time and by the way we were moving while I was having a baby like he wasn't there part of it like he was there through the pregnancy but we were moving houses And um, when the nurse was like, I'm going to take the catheter out. So anyways, I got up. I took two steps and I was trying to hold my pee. I literally pissed myself all over the floor and Mm -hmm. I had to like get the thing. And I told the nurse, I'm like, I'm sorry, I peed myself. Like it was so painful to walk because of my like my stitches. Mm -hmm. And it was hard to get up. And yeah, so I told her not to take the catheter because I, I just know my body. Sometimes I just feel like the nurses or doctors should just listen to what I have to say. Like I get that's the protocol, but I know my fucking body. Body and I can't do it. Yeah. Legit. Yeah. Just can't. Yeah. And, th- and that's the hard part, I think, about the whole thing is that obviously they're professionals. Yeah. And I'm sure they know what's good for you. But at the same time, it's like, mm, I want to listen to me and I want to listen to my body. So, um, yeah, that's um, that sounds really hard. It's super hard. Um, oh, whose question was that? Oh, that was yours. Okay. I'm going to ask you one now. So we all know that you have big dick energy and some, and you often come off as fearless, but what is your biggest fear? Um, I think my biggest fear is not being able to provide for my son. I don't give a shit about me. I can fend for myself. I can be homeless, whatever, because it's just me. But I think the biggest fear that I have is not giving what I can give that I know I can that my son deserves Mm -hmm. I'm deathly afraid of that I'm deathly afraid that I can't give Jaden the things that he deserves you know I mean he he doesn't need a whole lot but you know like the necessities it's like the roof over his head the you know giving him the best childhood you know whether it's sports or not everything but certain things Mm -hmm. I think that's that for me, that's just, yeah, my biggest. Okay. Uh, my next question for you is, um, so Ava has a book 
that was gifted to her about a rabbit and its feelings. And one time we were um, talking to Tita Har on FaceTime, and Ava said, this, ra- this book is my favorite. It has a rabbit. And Tita Har answers, mm, Tita Har also has a rabbit, but I don't read it. So tell us, what is this rabbit? <laughs> Fuck. Okay. This is probably something I shouldn't share, but I went through a phase where I feel like, again, like I needed to validate. I was very conservative in my 20s, but when I came to a point that I was okay with myself, yeah, I explored. I had sex with people. Like, it was just like, fuck, I I don't want a boyfriend. I don't want whatever. Yeah, I'm going to, like, Fair. have friends with benefits or I just whatever. Anyways, my rabbit is obviously my vibrator. I <laughs> use it because I feel like I don't – I'm at a point where I don't want to have random sex with people because – Sex is just sex. Mm-hmm. It truly is. Um, it's. I'm looking for a more deeper connection. And honestly, like if, be, ugh, fuck, I can't believe I'm saying this. Before I go on any of my date, I masturbate because that. <laughs> just, just so I don't fucking sleep with them, even if they're hot. Because if they're hot, it's just like a panty dropper. But I will. I will masturbate before I go on a date because yeah. I'm not gonna sleep with them. I think a lot of guys do that, actually. Also, just for the record, you don't have to be single and not sleeping with anybody to use a toy in the bedroom. Like Shit, I got, like, fucking travel toys, everything toys. Like, okay, girls well. got needs. <laughs> I ain't ashamed. I have toys, too, but, yeah. like, I, I have a... I'm, I'm not single, but it, I still have one. Just so... You know what? Sometimes you just want to get fucked and roll over and roll over and go to bed. It's like you just like guys. Simple. Like you don't want to have rub, sex. You just want to rub one out and go to sleep. Like yeah, it's, exactly. Girls can do the same thing. Trust me. Yeah. One burning, burning questions. Oh, again. Yeah. Have you ever let Mark suck on your titties to taste your breast milk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You. Whoever gave me that question, you got the answer. Who the fuck gave that question? Well, it was either Kat or Christine. Can I, I just say, it. your friends are fucked up. I know they are. They're, you guys are fuck fucked you guys. up and demented. But, yeah, like, that's, yeah, that <laughs> sounds about right. Um, it's a thing. And I'm going to ask Mark when I see him next. It's did a it thing. Taste good? It's, it's honestly a thing. And where did I see this? I think it was in Working Moms. It's a thing. Like, guys like... Did you get aroused when he sucked on your titties as he but, was... But would anybody get aroused when they suck on your titties? Yes. Okay, you should have just said yes. But then I did, I did say yes. Did it I taste did. good? Did he tell you your breast milk tastes we good? We both tried it, actually. Did you suck on your own titties? How can you do oh, that? Oh, yeah, I was just like, mm. oh, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> Got milk. <laughs> Oh, God. I hate my friends. Uh. (laughs) Your friends are the best. Thank you so much. Uh, Okay, next question. Okay, I know we're, I think we're almost out of time. I'm not sure, but um, we're going to do a round of would you rather. So this is just a set of consecutive questions. Okay, would you rather find the love of your life and perfect man, but he has a micro penis, or be with the best sex of your life, but he has a lisp and an eye patch? That's just so <laughs> fucking rude. How is that rude? Listen, like, okay. It's a speech impediment and it's real. I had a lisp until I was four, okay? Okay, so micro dick, love of my life. The other one has a lisp. Best sex of your life, but he has a lisp and an iPad. Okay, I'll have best sex of my life because I'll put a pillow over his face and then I'll just tell him not to fucking talk when we're having sex. Done. It's like, Harleen, would you want to have sex with me? <laughs> I'd be oh, like, I feel sh- so good. Shut the fuck up. I'm putting duct Suck tape on right. Dick. <laughs> so rude. Next, would you rather have a personal chef or personal masseuse? Personal masseuse. Really? I pick the chef. Um, give up wine or give up coffee? Give up coffee. Oh, I was think I was hoping. I know I was expecting you to say wine because you're like no, coffee snob. I love your things drunk. unplugged. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, Be able to read your child's mind or read your partner's mind? Read my partner's mind. 
um, have a child who's a picky eater or a child who never stops snacking? Not stop snacking. Jaden's like that right now. Yeah, I was just going to say you probably already have that. Um, homeschool your child or go with them to school every day? <laughs> go with them to school every day? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so much fun. Um, so you're on a date. Would you rather have halitosis or gas? <laughs> gas. I do that now. I don't give a fuck. That's so true. You do do that I don't want to have bad breath. Like, I can I can fart discreetly. But <laughs> when you're talking to someone, your fucking breath stinks. You can't mask that shit. That's true. Well, there's gum. Still. What if you wake up in the morning? Like, no. I guess. It's not so close to the face. My face is there, but my ass is not close <laughs> to their face. Yeah, but what do you Unless they with them? Well, I'm not going to let them lick my asshole right off the bat. It does, they don't have to lick your asshole to know you have gas. You could just be having sex and you just let one rip. Well, you it's fine. Gas? Yeah, gas. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Last one. Um, would you rather Jaden pierce his nose or pierce his lip? His nose. Okay, like Tupac. Okay, burning, burning question. Because <gasps> I feel like you're an... Oh, actually, you know what? No, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch it up to bona fide. Fine. So let's talk about Bona. Sure. Mark Bona. His can, last name is Bona. Can I just say one of my friends was like, you should do a segment on your show and only talk about Mark and you can call it the no bone zone or boneless. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? We might actually do that. <laughs> that's actually, that's pretty fucking cheeky. I, I was just like, that's very clever, but no. <laughs> no, we're going to do it. I'm going to sway okay, her. Okay, First okay. of all, are you ready to become Giselle Ashley Bona? Like, are you ready to take his last name? No. Um... <laughs> And I thought about this, and I, I told my sister, I was like, do you realize if I marry Mark, uh, I'll be a Bona, I'll be Giselle Bona. And she's like, well, maybe you can hyphenate. I was like, okay, so I'll be Giselle Dino Bona, because that doesn't sound any better. Um, but yeah, I'll take his last name. Okay, so what's your nickname for Mark in the bedroom, and what does he call you? Like, <sighs> Big Daddy? Or, hi, princess. <laughs> Okay, so lately he's been calling me. What is it? Uh, <laughs> I'm so, so, so. He's been calling me Big J. <laughs> because he says my ass are big, big juicies. That's what he calls them. Nice. I so, like that. So he um, he just calls me Big J for sure. He'd be like, hey, Big J. And I call him. I'm going to drink because I don't know what tell you what I call it. Okay, well, since you're drinking, I'm going to ask you a burning, oh, burning question. Really? That's what fucking happens when you don't fucking answer my <sighs> questions. Okay. 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 Um, have you ever had sex in one of your family or friend's house? If so, how many houses did you get dirty, down and dirty in, and whose house was it? You think I keep track of that well, shit? Well, okay, give me one name of whose house you boned at. Um, Maria's. <laughs> She knows this. It was when she first moved in. We helped her move in, and I christened her bedroom. You are not a very good friend. Uh, you are not fucking coming over to my house or house it or anything. I don't want <laughs> bonus juices on my fucking bed well, or my couch or anything else. Well, obviously now we have our own house to do that. But in. still. Ugh. <laughs> Just anyway. kidding, just kidding, just kidding. I got a drink for that one I didn't want to ask. Okay, well, since you keep drinking, I can always ask more questions. I'm good with that. Okay. Oh, you're a dick. Okay. Uh, so around Christmas 2018, you had a back injury or did something that you were limping. <laughs> How did you exactly sustain that injury? This person wanted to make sure that she doesn't do that when she gets back to her normal activities after having a baby. This was Barbara, you <laughs> fucking bitch. You know, just trying to be preventive. <sighs> preventive. Preventative. And she gives me a devil emoji. So I knew this was perverted in whatever way, Barb. Um, you know what? What was it? <sighs> okay. If on New Year's Eve or day you didn't see me in 20... It was last year, I think. 2019. It's because I pulled my groin. Okay. It was very fucking painful. And I couldn't... It was debilitating. I couldn't move. I had to send Mark and Ava away be, to, to be with family because... They're like, oh, are you coming to the New Year's party? I was like, no, I'm not. I cannot move. I cannot. I was bedridden. It was really bad. And that happened because we 
were having sex and we were in a very compromising position. And I told everyone it was because I <laughs> was from Spin. So I went, God. To see, I went to see Raymond. I don't know if he's going to watch this, but I actually went to see Raymond. Raymond is my doctor friend. Um, he works at Dynamic YYC. <laughs> and uh, I came in, and I was like, I pulled my groin. I can't move. What do I do? And he's like, what did... What did you do to this injury? Like, why? How did you get injured? I was like, Oh, I um, I haven't been to spin in a while, and um, I guess I went pretty hard. And he's like, All right, well, I gotta stay off the spin bike, blah blah. blah. But I am not gonna be there and be like, Yeah, I tried a very compromising position during sex, and I can't move. Anyways, <laughs> I hate you, Barb. <clears throat> <laughs> Next question. Oh my god, I can't believe she remembers that. I totally fucking forgot about that. Ha. <sighs> Can you share why soy sauce is a significant symbol in your life? You're a fucking <laughs> asshole, first of all. Um, I knew that fucking thing's going to come up. Fuck. You knew if I didn't ask you, I would have just fucking told it at some point. So. Okay, so once upon a time, <laughs> Harleen got real fucking wasted. Like black. Out. Yeah, so anyways, my so-called good friends, family takes me, instead of taking me home, <laughs> fucking takes me to Singapore Sam's to fucking eat Chinese food. Who does that? Take me home so I can go to sleep because I'm drunk as fuck and messy. Har was the only one of us who was blacked out and like passed out, but we were hungry. So anyways, <laughs> after fucking throwing up all over the bathroom, they leave me in a booth uh, with the condiments beside me. And of course, it's not like I'm sitting there like I'm sober. So I tipped the fucking soy sauce and I slept, o I slept all over the soy sauce. And then of course, these guys were like, well, don't pick her up. Just leave her there because then we have to clean her up and then we can't eat. So let's just leave her there and then we'll just clean her up after. Listen, it took a whole week to get soy sauce out of my fucking okay, hair. But I'm pretty sure everyone would have done the same thing. It's we either I wouldn't have done it. Yeah, you would because No, the, I the wouldn't. Food was there. We were drunk, we were hungry. Har was lying in a pool of soy sauce and it's either we pick her up right now, take her to the bathroom and take like half an hour to clean her off or we could eat first and let her just lay I'm gonna, in the soy sauce. I will never forget that. I promise you. I will we never forget. We could just forget. let her just take a little nap in the soy I'm sauce. She'll be fine. Yeah. Eat first and then I'm traumatized. So like, that's what we Legit. Did. Every time I see soy uh, sauce. I apologize, Har, but we were hungry. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> Fucking dick. All right, all right. Okay, we're going on an hour 20. You want to keep going? Part one, part two. Ugh. That's what we do. Okay. So do I get another question? Then? Fine. Okay. Go ask your question. All right. All right. Um, I'm trying to find a good one. Have you ever been arrested? <laughs> more than once? Yes. I didn't ask you if it was more than once. Oh, was okay. Yes. No question, yes. But I have been wait, arrested. Wait to out yourself to everybody. <sighs> I promise I'm not a bad person. Yes, I've been arrested. Okay. Is that all your question? <laughs> For what? Fuck. You, I can't ask you that I question. didn't steal. Yeah. I was fighting, okay? That's what I did. I, some bitch gave me the finger, so I turned the car around, and I fucking got out of the car, and I said, what'd you, what'd you fucking say to me? What'd you, so anyways, yeah. No, man, she grew up in Marlboro and went to Lacombe, so. Listen. What do you want? Okay, I, 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 would, I wouldn't have done that in the whim, but she really fucking provoked me with shit. Her, you don't need to explain yourself. We all know you're a different person now. Yeah, exactly. I don't okay, get arrested. Yeah, I know. Anyways. Anymore. <laughs> burning, burning question. Oh, okay, question. Okay, hit me, hit me, hit me. Oh, um, I'm going to kill all my friends. <laughs> how do you balance everything going on in your life without being feel, feeling overwhelmed? You've got your full-time job, Mark, Ava, and Ava's already a full-time job. Um, your family and friends, especially checking out, checking on up on them um, with their mental health, RML, this podcast, fitness, keeping your house clean. And do you feel overwhelmed? How do you cope and get yourself back on track? I smoke weed. I mean, I know my mom still looks down on that. A lot of my family members do. But it's really hard not to feel overwhelmed when you have so much going on. And I like to be busy, but... I also need to unwind. And a lot of people have their own process on how they do that. I smoke weed. 
doesn't make me a bad mom. Doesn't make me a bad person. You're just um, fun. I, you know what? I really love when you get high. We have like the <laughs> best fucking conversation. Snapchat, whoever invented you, we love you. Yeah, man. Like I honestly, when I tell Mark I'm out of weed, he's like, uh oh, because it just makes me a better person. Like you guys already know. Like I, I am cranky as fuck. I, I. I even told her, I'm like, I think I need to go to anger management. But instead of going to anger management, which is hella expensive, I just I just call up Superbs who delivers to me and and I'm just much better. And let me tell you my process, which is what I told her once too, is that what I'll do is if I'm feeling a certain way, I feel shitty, I feel guilty, I feel very overwhelmed, I'll smoke a joint. And then I'll write. I'll write in a journal and talk myself through what I'm feeling and then the next day when I'm sober I'll read it and then realize like yeah I was just overreacting because my high self is not the same as my sober self my high self is the one who's like listen you gotta fucking chill the fuck out chill the fuck out like because this is why and um you know a lot of people are just like maybe they frown upon it but like that's Honestly, if I didn't have that, I don't know, man. Wait, I'm squirming because I have to take the biggest piss in the whole world. It's so, okay, we're almost done. We are almost out of time, but yeah. I'm going to ask one more question. Okay, you yourself. ask one more and I'll ask one more. Okay. Okay. If someone offered you 500000 for Kylo, would you take it or pass it or pass to keep Kylo? I might have a serious buyer <laughs> for Kylo. I'm also taking 10% of the cut. Wait, What? Somebody is offering 500000 for, for Kylo. Kylo. Would you take it or would you say, no, I'm going to keep my dog? I, and I might have a serious buyer. And if it goes through, I'm taking 10% of the $500,000. $500,000? Yeah. Are you going to give up Kylo? Well, first of all, no, for two reasons. One, because that's basically Mark's dog. Because honestly, if anyone in the house, like, I'm hard to deal with. Ava's hard to deal with. Mark's out is Kylo. Kylo loves Mark so much. Kylo's my dog, you guys. Follow me I would have said yes. That's not your dog. It's Mark's dog. No, I know. But girl, the other day, someone bought Mark's seat. Someone wanted to buy CDs and I sold Mark's CDs for two bucks. And he came home. He's like, you realize these are my CDs. I was like, you realize you don't need CDs anymore. You got Spotify. He got, he got so mad. Check at me us for, out on Spotify. We're on Spotify. <laughs> Download it. He got so mad at me for selling his CDs. Can you imagine if I sold his fucking dog? Um, yeah. And second, no, I can't. She's like my baby. She was my first baby before my real baby. And okay, she, well, fuck. I don't get the fucking cut. I don't want to hear the rest of the story because I ain't getting the 10% anyways. Just I want to know who the fuck would pay $500,000 for my dog. Hey, you never know. But if you do decide, let me know. All right, then. I want to know who you're talking to that's got that kind of money and isn't sharing shit. <laughs> All right. Um, that was that your last question for me? Yeah. Okay. One, two, yeah. two last questions for okay. you. What's... So we also always talk about how we grew up and how childhood trauma is a common theme in our episodes. Yep. So, but what parenting hacks or tactics do you use that, that work for you that you learn from your own parents? Nothing. So actually, no, no, that's not true. Um, I learned being kind and calm with, for my mom. And I think that's the tactic that I used. I don't, I don't, like, honestly, I just feel like I was fucked up as a child. Like, again, I don't blame my parents or anything like that. But I I just didn't... There's just certain things my parents did I said I would never do. Mm-hmm. And um, honestly, because I'm being so mindful of it, I uh, read a lot self-help books. I talk to friends. I talk to families. I dissect and I communicate with my baby daddy. If I feel like I did something that I wasn't right or anything like that I asked for opinions and I I only go to people who know that they're not going to attack me with it they're going to listen to it and they're going to help me dissect it Mm -hmm. um honestly anything that I got from my childhood I would not use at all with my child it just wasn't except for being calm and except for being calm for my mother and being patient but everything else uh, I'm doing everything opposite Mm -hmm. from when I was being raised as a child. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Last question of the night. Before I have to pee because I I might pee my pants because I peed my pants the other night. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you tell us about that? So I was shoveling. <laughs> and.
And of course I was shoveling and I was almost done and I was like, fuck, I gotta go pee, blah, blah, blah. And then as soon as I got in, I took my jacket off and I, you know how when you go up the stairs, you don't go one by one and walk. So I was taking two jump steps. Well, I took the second jump step and it dribbled. And then as soon as I took the other second jump step, it dribbled. And then I was like, fuck, and I was trying to hold it. And then I took two, like another two and two. And then I just basically pissed myself. So, yeah. <laughs> so, Does that so count shameless. as a question or should I ask you another one? Well, ask me another one because I'm going to ask you one last thing before okay, we depart. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Um, okay, I want to know. Um, so we all know your big dick energy. We can feel it. I bet everybody at home can feel it. There's hose. There's hose. <laughs> when has, like, I know that having that has helped you in the past, but when, like, when does it actually really come into, um, like, a positive thing for you? Oh, big dick energy? Mm-hmm. Or, sorry, a negative thing. A negative thing. Oh, when it's negative? Big dick energy is a very positive thing because you can yeah. walk into a room. When it's negative for yeah, me? Yeah, when is it negative? Um, I feel like in my, um, in my dating life. I am very masculine when it comes to it. And I, as much as I'm, 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 I'm very loving, I'm very affectionate behind closed doors. I'm not affectionate in public. I just, uh, that's something I'm working on. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why, but I think it's just, I don't know. I don't know why I'm, that's something that I'm learning. But um, I think that if I'm always so, I feel always masculine. Like I always, like if I'm with someone who's super successful, it's like we got to be even. It mm-hmm. never has to be one or the other, but that's something that I'm learning to be a little bit more feminine. Um, you know, like not always making, like again, it comes back to validation. Like I'm validating like that I'm good enough to be with this person. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's okay that I could show a little bit of vulnerability because I don't. I come swinging out of the gates and I'm just like, look at me. I'm this, I'm this, I got this. Like, I, I'm the person. Feel, do you feel like they kind of just get intimidated by that and then just yeah, kind of like definitely. back away a little yeah. bit? Yeah, I was okay. I was told that a couple of times that mm-hmm. I... You're a little strong. I'm a little too strong for them as much as they say, oh, we love a strong woman. Um, it was too much. It was too much that they felt like they felt like there was nothing they could provide for me as them being a man because I was but sorry I think that's their problem not not exactly it's not my problem if you if you can't keep up with my hustle then get the fuck out of here I'm good yeah okay okay last burning burning actually it's not a burning question so before (laughs) god before we go tell the world who Giselle Dino is what do you want people to know about you and who you are I just want people to know that, like, in the past, I haven't, I I never made a lot, like, the best decisions. Um, I had a lot of enemies growing up. um, But I am a totally different person now. And when we talk about childhood trauma, it's like, I now know that I can look back in those times that I was a dick or an asshole or a bully or whatever and realize that it's because of a lot of the trauma that I had growing up and I just had something to prove, but I am a way different person now. Um, I'm all about having empathy and being kind. It's something that I teach my daughter every, every single day. I always tell her that, you know, if you see somebody by themselves in the playground, just go ask them if they want to play with you or whatever, because like in this world and in this day and age, all the world really needs more of is kindness. And even though I wasn't able to, contribute a lot of that growing up I am trying my best now to make up for it um I give back when I can Ham gives back when we can and I also want to just instill in my daughter that that is the way to go it's just kindness over everything well Giselle thank you so much and I have seen the growth that you've I, I've just seen the growth, like for sure. So thank you so much, everyone, for um, allowing us to come into your space as you're coming into our space. Um, and stay tuned for 2021 because it's going to be a big year for Ham. And again, thank you so much. And I hope everybody had a good holidays and a happy new year. And uh, remember to always be kind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not sure how long this fucking pandemic is going to keep going, but remember to always wash your hands, wear your mask, and love yourself. Love, love, love yourself, even on the hardest days. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.